Okay, in this video we're going to take a quick look at the time slider and the transport controls. This down here is our time slider. It's kind of like a ruler showing us increments of time and it's showing us this time in frames. Okay, cool. So this is frame one right here that is currently highlighted. And we usually refer to this as our time slider itself while the whole thing is really the time slider and this is kind of the timeline indicator if you will. Mm -hmm. So currently looking at frame one, if I slide this over, now looking at frame 10, go over a little bit further, we're looking at frame 20. You can see what's highlighted right here. So how are you moving that? I'm simply clicking and dragging. Okay. So with the left mouse button. With the left mouse button, that is correct. And as I select on uh, a particular frame, you'll notice that frame is indicated over here. Okay. Now, why is the time slider important? Well, Maya is an animation package. That's animation right. Animation means the change of an attribute's value over, over time. Over time. So time is obviously an important factor. Oh, for sure. So let's come up here and create a NURBS sphere. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Move tool. I'm going to move it in the x-axis. Let's rotate my viewport around. Now, I am going to keyframe this sphere moving from one side over to the other. Now, of course, later on, there's going to be full animation lessons in this course. Sure. But for now, let's go ahead and do something very simple because it will help explain what's happening inside our timeline just a little bit better. Now, in the last lesson, we talked about the channel box showing a bunch of attributes that were keyable. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do just to speed things up is I'm simply going to hit the S key. You'll notice by hitting the S key that it has now changed the color of all of my attributes visible in the channel box from white to an orange color. It's also done something else. You'll notice a little cyan colored tick mark right here. If I move my mouse off of it, it's actually a red colored tick mark. Okay. It's always cyan when you've got it highlighted or right, selected. Right. So let's go ahead, and, and that's indicating a keyframe. Now let's go ahead and bring our timeline indicator all the way over here to the right hand side. As a matter of fact, now nah, we'll do it right here. This will work. And I'm going to take and move my sphere all the way to the other side of the grid, and I'm going to hit S again. Okay. I have now set a series of keyframes twice. All right. To be more precise, I've set 10 keyframes at each time I've hit S. You can see down here in our command feedback area, result 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I set a keyframe on all of these, recording their values at this given frame. Okay. What does this give us? Well, if I now drag my timeline indicator back and forth, Maya is going to interpolate between the values that were recorded at frame one and the values that were recorded at frame 24. Resulting in animation. Giving us animation. Now what I'm going to do is come over here to frame 12, kind of a halfway point if you will, and move our object up in the Y axis. Now I'm going to hit S one more time. So 10 more keyframes were just created. That's right. Now of all of these different things over here, all these different attributes, we've really only changed the attribute values of two attributes over time. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, translate Z, all my rotate scales and visibilities, these attribute values never change. It's more or less a flat line. They sure. change over time. So they're not really animated. That makes all of these guys static channels. Okay. Well, okay. Now, the first two, of course, these guys right here, they have been animated. And what I mean by that is their values, their attribute values, do change over time. Check this out. If I come and click back over here on frame one, and I drag my time slider now, look at this. We go up and then back down. Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. More importantly, we're now seeing where we have animation because we get this red keyframe indicator on our timeline. So it's, it's really that simple. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about the range slider in which we can control how much time we see on our little time ruler or frame ruler right here. Moving on over to the right-hand side, we get into the transport controls. The transport controls, I can do a series of things. First of all, I can specify where my time slider needs to be. So I can say, look, go to frame 12, enter. Why is this important? Well, let's say you're dealing with a very heavy scene and playback is extremely slow. Do you really want to hit play to wait till the timeline got all the way up to frame 230? Sure. No, you just type in 230. Or even a, in a scene with multiple frames visible here on the timeline, it may be difficult to drag to a precise frame. Exactly. So keep that in mind. Now, moving on over with the transport controls, basically, think of a more advanced VCR or DVD. Sure. Where we have the ability to simply hit play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this first button over here, which is going to rewind to the very beginning 
selecting of our playback range, which is frame one. Now I'm going to hit play. And it's awfully fast at the moment. So what I'm going to do is something fancy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to click on this button here, Animation Preferences. Right next to the Auto Key button. Which we're going to talk about a little like a bit more in a few minutes. Sure. But I'm going to change my playback speed from play every frame to play real time, which in this case is at 24 frames per second. All right. We'll talk more about that coming up. So let's go ahead and save that. Now when I hit play, now we get playback over a full second. So 1, 1,001. There we go. So now this is the animation that is playing back. Maya is interpolating between our attribute value changes at these different keyframe spots. Cool. Okay, and we get animation. Now, talking about the transport controls, rewind to the beginning, play forwards. We can play backwards in case we want to analyze the animation going backwards. You'll notice that as I each as I hit each of the play buttons, the icon then changes to a stop button, allowing me to stop. Now I have a few more things that I can do with these buttons. I can step forward to the next keyframe, which is going to then take me from 1 to frame 12. Bink, we're now at frame 12. Bink, we're now at frame 12. 24. 24. Right. <laughs> Count by 12. Yes, I can. Yeah. And this can become very handy. Let's rewind back to the beginning. Another thing that I can do is step forward one frame at a time. Dink, 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 dink. I can also step backwards one frame at a time. Dink, dink, dink. As I could rewind to the very end of, I mean, beginning of my animation, I can also fast forward to the very end of my animation. Cool. And so that's pretty much it for the transport controls. One more thing to point out is that with the transport controls and my time slider, I can right click and I get this context menu that allows a series of options that are related to animation, such as we're going to cut, copy, or paste keyframes, delete keyframes, we're going to snap uh, to specific frames. Um, I can do things with keys by converting them to breakdown or back to regular keys, to mm -hmm. in-betweens. There's all sorts of things, changing tangent types, etc. And finally, I can make a play, play blast, which is more or less a quick rendered out animation, rendered from the viewport, though. So okay. it's not in all its glory with shadows and uh, beautiful textures, etc. Just sort of a quick preview it's so you can time out your animation. But it is a rendered animation that you can play back in real time. And this becomes very important when you're checking the timing of an animation that you create. Cool. Now, if I right-click over here, I get almost the exact same things. We get a few other things that we can uh, play with as well. Actu actually, no, we don't. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but um, and my brain just went off into la-la land for a second. A few I've different things that are related to how the time slider plays back. Right, That's right. what I was trying to say. And now uh, we'll talk more about these later on as we start diving deeper into the different projects that we're going to be doing during the Maya Fundamentals course. Cool. So with that, that is going to wrap up the time slider and the transport controls. Thanks a lot, guys.